This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I'm the Medical Director of the Movement Disorder Center at the Colorado Neurological Institute. Thank you for joining us for installment two of this patient education series about Parkinson's disease. Today we're going to discuss the prevalence and incidence of Parkinson's disease. In other words, how common is Parkinson's disease? Indeed, it is remarkably common, is found throughout the world, and affects both men and women. We really do not have a complete understanding about the cause of Parkinson's disease, but a great number of advances are being made also in this field. We understand that there is a significant genetic, but probably also a significant environmental influence. Parkinson's disease is remarkably common affecting about 1% of individuals in their lifetime. The disease becomes increasingly common as people age. It affects about 1 to 1.5 million people in the United States and 4 to 6 million people worldwide. About 60,000 individuals are newly diagnosed with Parkinson's disease each year in the United States. The greatest risk factor for developing Parkinson's disease is increased age. The disease generally affects people between ages 40 and 60 years, though can also occur in both younger and older individuals. The disease affects men more than women in a ratio of 3 to 2. Parkinson's disease affects people of all ethnicities and living throughout the world. Knowledge of the cause of Parkinson's disease is rather incomplete. What we do understand is that the disease often develops due to a complex interaction between one's underlying genetic background in combination with environmental factors and increased age. Environmental risk factors include exposure to herbicides and pesticides. There are other associated risk factors including rural living and exposure to well water. Some environmental factors are associated with a lower than average risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Negative associations include use of caffeine, cigarette smoking, and use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen. These environmental associations represent statistical correlations and are not definite causes or preventions of Parkinson's disease. About 5% of Parkinson's disease cases have a monogenetic cause, meaning they are due to a mutation in a single gene. New genes that cause Parkinson's disease in this way are discovered at a rate of nearly one gene every three to six months. About 10 to 20 of such genes have already been identified. Many of these genes are involved in cellular disposal of misfolded or abnormal proteins. Although monogenetic cases constitute only a small percentage of people with Parkinson's disease, better understanding of these genes and how they act within the cell can help us to understand the disease as a whole. Such insights are important for the development of new preventative treatments. The vast majority of those with Parkinson's disease do not have a known monogenetic cause. Rather, it is thought that one's genetic background may predispose him or her to developing the disease. This genetic predisposition, when combined with environmental factors, can lead to the development of Parkinson's disease. A common saying is that genetics loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. The cause of Parkinson's disease in most cases is not entirely understood, but likely lies in the complex interaction of several factors. As we have reviewed already, Parkinson's disease causation is a rather complex topic, and it seems that there are both genetic and environmental influences when one develops Parkinson's disease. Having Parkinson's disease itself does not mean necessarily that each of your children will definitely get Parkinson's disease, but it does mean that they're at increased risk. Indeed, their risk in general is about two or three times the risk seen in the general population. Now, the 
understanding of Parkinson's disease, risk factors, and causation is dramatically expanding, and we are learning more and more, especially with respect to the genetics of Parkinson's disease. Here at the Colorado Neurological Institute, we are actively engaged in research regarding the genetics of Parkinson's disease, and if you wish to know more, please visit our website. I hope that you will join us for the next installment of this Parkinson's disease education video series.